can't get this VR stream to work out right, and I can't figure out why. Wait, what am I saying? I know exactly why. Because this is the Intel Streamers Bootcamp, and I'm Bad News Baron, and I'm going to tell you exactly what's wrong with your broken VR stream. Come with me! If you're experiencing a delay in the audio of your stream, you would solve it the way that you would any other normal broadcast that you're doing. So you would go into XSplit or whatever software you're using and you'd go into your audio settings. From there, you would set a delay onto your microphone or on your video card and you would try to sync things up manually by yourself. That may mean an overall delay slightly in your stream, but things will come out better in the end for it. If you are experiencing motion sickness in the VR title, the best thing that you can do is just take off the headset and go outside for a little while or sit down. Don't mess around with that stuff. There's also a chance that your audience could get motion sick for what they're seeing on the screen because often the footage is pretty shaky. Be aware of what your audience is feeling and telling you and be aware of your own body so you don't make yourself sick. When you're streaming virtual reality, you may see that you are dropping more frames than usual. This is probably because you're using more processing power than usual, especially if you're using a single PC setup. So make sure that you go into your encoding options and make sure that your preset is maybe a little bit higher on your CPU options. That way more CPU can be freed up for your VR processes. For virtual reality streaming, the extra demand on your PC is probably going to mean that you're going to want a two PC setup when you're broadcasting. That means having one computer that's playing the game and another computer that's capturing the video off the first computer and putting it into your broadcast software like XSplit. That's going to allow you to free up a lot of your processing power and it's going to result in a lot smoother, high quality image for all of your viewers. No matter what headset that you are using, you're going to need to make sure that you have a clear view between you, your controllers, and your reference sensors, no matter where they're placed. And remember, the Oculus is not a room-scale experience out of the box, which means if you get fully turned around, it's not going to be able to see your controllers. Keep that in mind when you're choosing your games. For the space that you are using in virtual reality, you want to make sure that you have a little bit of room to move around. If you are like me and you have a very limited studio, you may find yourself backed up against the green screen like this when you're operating, which may mean that while you're playing Arizona Sunshine, you back yourself into the screen. You don't want that. So if you are doing a large room scale game, make sure that you have at least like a five foot by five foot area so that you don't crash into anything and ruin your computer and monitors and break your house. If you're streaming VR and you notice that your controllers stop operating correctly, chances are you're blocking the sensor. Now, if you want to interact with your audience while you're streaming, there is, of course, a little bit of an issue if you can't see chat inside of your headset. There are a couple of programs that will do just that and display it in your HMD, but if not, you might want someone as a go-between between you and your audience. So, voice chat is always a great option. They can read chat back to you and you can respond. In terms of staying engaged with your audience while you're broadcasting, there's a couple of different philosophies you can go with. One is you interact with your audience a lot and you stay really committed to that idea using a program or a go-between with you in chat. The other is you just ignore the audience, which sounds kind of crazy, but if you commit to the immersion of the VR experience, chances are your audience will be just as engaged and they'll enjoy that just as much. Now, we did mention mixed reality earlier, which is complicated to set up, so if you want to learn more about doing a mixed reality stream, we've got a full video for you. That's all for this episode of Intel Streamers Bootcamp. For additional topics, make sure that you check back often, and also make sure that you check out the links at the end of this video. Also, if you have an idea for a future video, make sure that you leave a comment below this video. I'm Bad News Baron. I'll see you next time.